immune system of our body protects us from harmful pathogens. And that's why we can compare our immune system with the defense system of a country, which protects us from all kinds of enemies. But imagine our protectors, which used to protect us from all sort of harmful effects, turn their face against us. And instead of protecting our body, they start harming our own body. And this kind of situation happens du during autoimmune disorders, where instead of protecting, our own immune cells like T cells, B cells and the plasma cells hit our own body, like rheumatoid arthritis, where autoreactive T cells consider the antigens of our body to be foreign and they counter our own body. And that's why we get severe joint pains and distortion of the finger joints. Same happens in case of Hashimoto's thyroiditis, where autoreactive plasma cells produce autoreactive antibodies against thyroid gland and the thyroid gland gets depleted and there is severe inflammation of that tissue. In myasthenia gravis, the situation is the same. Autoreactive B cells produce antibody against the postsynaptic receptor. That leads to abnormalities in the neuromuscular junction leading to severe muscle pain and inflammation. So all these things tells us that when immune system turn their face against us and become rogue, the situation could be detrimental. There should be some safeguard mechanism which can protect our body and ensures that our body is protected from this kind of situation. So two questions are crucial to understand. First, where does these autoreactive immune cells come from? And is there any safeguard mechanism present in our body which can prevent the production of these autoreactive cells. It turns out there is a mechanism called immune tolerance, which works like a safeguard mechanism to prevent the production of these autoreactive cells, thus protecting our body from the harmful effect of these autoreactive cells. And in this video, we'll talk about the immune tolerance. Immune tolerance could work in two different levels, like the central tolerance and the peripheral tolerance. The mechanism is employed on T cell as well as B cell and we would learn about both and at least have a bird's eye view about that. Let's talk about the B cell development first to understand the tolerance mechanism. During B cell development, lymphoid progenitor cell in subsequent step give rise to a immature B cell. And in this immature B cell, you have the B cell receptor which can recognize antigens. But if, the, if they recognize self-antigens with very high affinity or shows very strong BCR signaling, then body has to take a preventive me measure because there are chances that this immature B cells which interact with very high affinity could become rogue in future and they would harm their own body. So they could be killed by apoptotic mechanism by a program cell death or they could be suppressed or they could go to a hibernation by a mechanism known as energy where B cell receptors are down regulated and there is a third way where there is a the body gives chance to these immature B cell to re-edit their BCRs such that they no longer show high affinity to that self antigens and all these mechanisms ensure that autoreactive B cell production is prevented in the level of bone marrow and this mechanism is known as central tolerance mechanism. Just like we have seen central tolerance mechanism, there is peripheral tolerance mechanism which takes place in the lymph node which is a peripheral lymph organ. In the peripheral lymph organ, generally the immature B cells populate there, they divide there and undergoes clonal expansion, they undergo affinity maturation and class switching, ultimately they undergo differentiation to produce plasma cells. But sometimes things can go wrong and they create autoreactive plasma cells, which secretes autoreactive antibodies against self antigens. This situation is detrimental and this situation could lead to autoimmune disease. So body's peripheral tolerance mechanism ensures that these autoreactive B cells or the plasma cells would die via apoptosis 
and instead of undergoing proliferation, they undergo clonal energy where they hibernate and they don't react with other uh, an antigens. So these mechanism ensures that at periphery tolerance is uh, established. So this leads to central and peripheral tolerance of the B cell. In case of T cell, the situation is the same. T cell development is very stringent, which occurs in the thymus. In the thymus, when the T cell enters by high endothelial venue, they reach the thymal subcapsular region, which is a peripheral region of the thymus. From there, they descend they increase in number by rapidly dividing. They descend down to the cortex and they interact with thymal epithelial cells, thymic epithelial cells. And they, they learn many things from them and they undergo several screening rounds. They move to corticomedullary junction where they encounter again some other thymic epithelial cells. And eventually they move to medulla and when their training is over, they leave the thymus. But during this training, which is a long period, which is almost three weeks, they learn many things and undergo several rounds of screening procedures. And almost 90% of them don't make it. So first, they have a double negative stage when they don't have any of the co-receptor. They have only some aspect of the T-cell receptor, but no CD8 or CD4 co-receptor. Now, they transit to a double positive stage where they have CD8 positive and CD4 co-receptor at the same time. Later on, these 80% of these cells would eventually undergo a process of positive and negative selection. The positive selection would ensure that it has to recognize MHCs. Otherwise, they would die by neglect. Now, if they cannot recognize MHC, they are of no use. So it's better that they die. But the cells which recognize MHC, be it a class 1 MHC or class 2 MHC, they survive and go to the next screening process. The next screening process is called the negative selection, where the cells which interacts with the MHC-bound MHC antigens with a moderate affinity, they go to the next round. Moderate or low level of affinity, they go to the next round. But if they interact with the MHC-bound peptide with very high affinity, then they are killed by apoptotic mechanism or they undergo negative selection. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. In this video, I talked about how T cell and B cell tolerance can save our body from autoimmune disorders. So if you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.